Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever everybody is. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to talk about Food Framework today. Um, let me share my screen and we'll get started. Um, okay, uh, my name is Kash Qureshi. I'm a product manager on the Food Framework team. Um, and I'm here today with uh, Nick Simons, um, also uh, uh, on the product team uh, for Food Framework. Um, so let's talk about building collaborative apps. Um, see if my screen works. There we go. So, so real-time collaboration is expected by default uh, by our users today um, in in uh, you know productivity uh, scenarios. But the problem is that building collaborative experiences that are fast, reliable, scalable, and feel natural to the users is still very hard to do. Um, if you can think of you know multiple users collaborating, what what do you, what do you need to do in order to make that happen? You need to you know take the changes from uh, different clients and and uh, move it to the other clients that are in a collaborative session. Um, those changes. Um, let's talk about the 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 issues. You know, the changes need to be synchronized and consistent. You have to propagate those changes in real time, very very quickly. Move minimal data around. Right, you can be moving. The, all the 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 whole file around uh, on every change, so we need to be mindful of that. Um, and as with anything collaborative, we we've all used Git, right? So there's conflicts that happen, and those need to be resolved. And you need to be very careful when merging those conflicts to not end up in an inconsistent uh, consistent state or end up with data loss. Um, and then you know a lot of other things latency management network network reliability issues uh you need to make sure all of this is done in a secure and and you know uh, data privacy uh, uh guidelines are met and it's compliant uh, so a lot of work that needs to happen under the covers in order to just build uh something that is so uh expected by our users today um so so that's where fluid framework comes in um, it is a collection of client libraries for storing application data and synchronizing it between clients in real time. And one of the key sort of tenants for us is to make this super simple for you, the developer, to integrate it into your applications. So you can go from single player to multiplayer with very, you know, very, very few lines of code. Um, and the other tenant for us is to bring um, very familiar coding patterns uh, to the front end web developers um, as part of uh, you know offering this functionality. Um, so the way it works is um, we give you something called distributed data structures, which are very, very similar to the normal data structures that any web developer um, is is familiar with uh, uh, using. Uh, you can think of you know maps, strings, um, and today we're announcing a new one called shared tree DDS. Uh, so you as a as a developer, Continue to use these data structures as if you're writing a, you know, non-collaborative uh, local application. Um, but Fluid under the covers is going to synchronize these uh, this data to the other clients automatically. Um, so you know, you built your UI to talk to the data as if it was the local data structure and update the UI on any changes happening to the data. Um, but under the covers. Fluid will take care of propagating those and you know merging the the changes for coming in from remote uh, uh, clients um, and and you know presenting it back to your application. Um, the other you know really cool thing about Fluid is it's open source, so you can see how Fluid is doing it. You can contribute to it. You can build on it, and you know contributions are always always welcome. Um, so here's a high level structure of uh, how Fluid is set up. You have your client code, which is the box in the green at the top. That's your application and the Fluid Framework client library sits within it. And then uh, under the covers is, is are the service options that we offer. Um, and one key thing to note is you don't have to do anything about the service. Uh, you don't have to write any code for the service options. Um, it's all, you know, works out of the box. You just configure it, connect to it, and boom, you're you're ready to go. Uh, and we have multiple offerings in, in that space as well. Um, so let's dig into those. Uh, today, we offer two primary service options. There's the Azure Fluid Relay. It's been available for um, over a year now. It is Azure hosted. 
available globally and you know comes with all of the scale security compliance and reliability that you've come to love and and uh, expect from from azure um and uh yeah it's serving millions of customers and millions of sessions every day so ready to go production for your production scenarios the other service option that we have is called sharepoint embedded uh and it was very very recently announced in and it's in uh, public preview um and it uh, uh the the key difference between the two is in azure fluid relay your data is stored in in azure storage azure blobs um with sharepoint embedded your data is stored in the m365 tenant of your customers um so as part of that you get all of the benefits of security and compliance and you can have a lot more control over your collaborative data um that, that's stored um uh, as part of uh, sharepoint embedded um and because we're open source there's always the you know build your own fluid service option if if uh, you shall uh, choose to do so, um, but you know it requires jumping through some some hoops, obviously, because you will be hosting and managing this service on your own. So Fluid is actually powering a lot of applications with Microsoft today. Um, if you've used the Microsoft Loop application, um, you know it's uh, built on the Fluid technology. Microsoft Whiteboard uh, uses Fluid for their real-time collaboration, um, and uh, Power Platform is also starting to use uh, Fluid, uh, the Fluid technology. And there's you know a bunch of other other, other things that are in in uh, development at the moment. Um, and we've also partnered with external customers like Hexagon and Autodesk and they have utilized and deployed fluid technology in their own applications um and and uh, you know we we love to see the the ecosystem and the community grow around this technology um they some sort of you know mentioned this uh, at the start of the talk fluid firmware 2.0 beta is available now we just launched it yesterday and it's you know ready for you to uh, uh pick up and and use in your in your applications it will become generally available later this summer um, in the build timeframe, um, and you know the two new things that we've introduced, uh, like I mentioned earlier, are ShareTree DDS, which allows you to use very simple, intuitive APIs to model your data, um, and your data can be you know uh, like nests of of data objects, hierarchical, very complex. But we offer simple APIs for you to replicate that data and and be able to uh, to model that data and be able to utilize the collaborative capabilities of Fluid. And the other one is the SharePoint embedded option, which allows you to again use SharePoint embedded to move the deltas changes around and also leverage the M365 storage. Um, you can learn more at aka.ms/fluid. Um, so that's the the first link on the on the left, and then the second one. We would love to hear what the developer community is building. So uh, please reach out to us. Go to aka.ms/fluid/connect, um, and uh, yeah, we can we can help you um, answer any questions and and you know love to hear your feedback on 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 using Fluid Framework uh, and trying out the new 2.0 beta. Uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Nick uh, to demo. Um, um, to show a demo application and show the code about how it all works. Nick, over to you. Alrighty, I am going to share my screen and share a demo. So let's go ahead. This seems like it work. Okay, so first I'm just going to quickly show you an app. Um, so this application is an app that um, we built using React. Um, it's actually fairly complicated, and we do have simpler demos. But I'm just going to duplicate this tab. Um, it says use with one, but that's because there's only one user, um, even though there's two screens. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some content. Um, and I can add a group, and I can put things in the group, and I can add stuff directly in the group. And you can type on here, and as you can see, when I type over here, it's showing up over there. Um, oh, it just you can see so it's a collaborative application um, and it is using the fluid framework to do that um, one of the really cool things about this that i really want to stress is that this is obviously it's it, it's built for real-time collaboration but it's also just a really good file io stack so if you're using sharepoint embedded um, once you have fluid framework set up you don't have to think about file io at all 
you've got all the crud you need. You basically create your model, you operate against that model like it's local data structures. And not only is it synced to all the clients, it's also persisted to SharePoint um, in essentially a file inside of SharePoint embedded um, that an admin can, can manage, uh, manages permissions just like SharePoint, all the same compliance um, stuff works just like with SharePoint. Um, so, you know, it's it's actually just a really good way to build web apps. I mean, you can also use it to build not web apps, but web apps are the easiest path to entry. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you some code. Um, I have five minutes. Um, so the first thing I want to stress is the app I just showed you is built using the new shared tree data structure, um, and that shared tree data structure is designed to emulate as closely as possible working with TypeScript um, object models. And so the way you set up an application is, well, first you have to actually connect to Fluid, and I'm, I'm not going to show how to do that, um, but it's not super complicated. Uh, and with SharePoint, it's it's actually really, really simple because you don't need any service endpoint. Um, you can do it entirely client side. With, um, with Azure, you do need to set up some type of authentication service. Uh, in order to manage identity and permissions. That's not something that comes out of the box with Azure Fluid Relay. You need to provide that in, in your application yourself. Um, but that's it. Everything else about Fluid is, is client side, except for the ordering service that Cash talked about. So here we're looking at schema. And what I want to show is the schema of the note object. So if you recall in the demo, there were these little sticky notes um, on the canvas, and those sticky notes are represented in the data structure by this object. It's just called a note. We create a class, we call it note. It extends this special, um, this special basically class um, that's returned by this object method, which is produced by a schema factory, which is defined um, at the top of the screen here. And what that does is it basically injects the fluid magic into what is otherwise a pretty normal class. You identify the um, properties that you want merged, um, or I should say synced and merged up here. Um, this includes, in this case, an array which has special merge semantics. Um, so that manages your ability to vote on notes, which is a feature of the app. And then you can also include um, methods for actually um, encapsulating some of the mutation stuff that you might want to do to this object. So um, there are built in methods for changing um, the data, um, but it's frequently useful to be able to actually collect those together. And you can just add those directly to your class, which makes it super easy to actually use these objects. Um, so I'm just checking time check, got two minutes. So the way we built this essentially is we just built a React app. And so I'm just going to quickly show you one example of how that works. So the the text area of that sticky note has its own React component. And in order to make that work, we pass in um, a note object. And all we do when we want to change the text is we just change it. Um, so we do basically we call the update text method, which was defined in the schema, um, and we pass it a new value. And that's it. That's that's all we do. And then with that, Every single client gets an event um, which React um, responds to, updates the view, and you have real-time collab. Um, and that's it. It's that's the only change you need to make, and everything is persisted to the um, to SharePoint or to the Azure Fluid Relay storage, um, and is synced with every client. And with that, I have one minute left, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it.